Previews for Tiana's Bayou Adventure are not going well, but Disney might have a different issue on their hand. This time, they released their own POV shot of the entire ride, and it's getting disliked in a way that I don't think Disney was anticipating. Let's talk about the growing divide between influencers and Disney fans here on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Gamble, an investigative reporter for That Park Place, and uh, it seems to be a zippity doo dah day, depending on where you stand. Vash, are we going to talk about the truth? Something satisfactual? I think so, but uh, first, Jonas, we've got to get the band together before the fire alarm comes off. Go, go, <laughs> let's go! The band for what? This is the question that I have. When I look at this ride, I I, I, I get it that there's... there. Okay, so you go in the queue, and there is... You're obviously in some kind of food co-op. Not a restaurant, but a food co-op. And the food co-op also has a kitchen. The The restaurant itself is somewhere else. Uh, maybe there's the scent of beignets there. Okay, Tiana is a, is a businesswoman with a growing business, and somehow she has uh, made a place called Tiana's Foods and also convinced other people that despite her name is on it, they also own it, and they also need to work in a salt mine. It's, it's perfectly clear why they would be going and trying to get band members in the bayou, and all of those band members are animals. Well... That's, I mean, that's pretty confusing, but at least we picked up okra, onions, chilies, and everything else to make gumbo, and we made beignets instead, so you got that going for you as well. <laughs> what what an amazing ride. See, this isn't even where we were wanting to start today, but, but, but we need to get to this. Okay, first of all, we're going to go over to Forbes. This is an amazing uh, article here. Disney spoils its own ride and pays the price by Caroline Reed over there at Forbes, a senior contributor. And uh, Caroline Reed says, does some of the best coverage of Disney that you can do at a mainstream outlet like Forbes. And I highly recommend just going over there and clicking on her name, open any article that she does, and, and just go through. It's, it's all based in documentation. It's all based in what has actually happened, or in this case, documentation of fan reaction to what has happened. We're not going to read the, the whole thing because... You need to go over there and check it out. I do have a subscription. I'm just not logged in on that machine. Disney's theme park design division is famous for its secrecy. So when it recently posted a full video of its newest attraction on YouTube a month before it launched, by the way, not supposed to launch until June 28th, uh, it seemed to be the dawn of a whole new world. It may not last for long. Called Imagineers for their imaginative use of engineering, the wizards who design Disney's theme parks are fiercely protective of their creations. And there's a good reason for this. Disney's Imagineering division spends tens of millions of dollars I don't even know if that's a high enough number here, developing new attractions which are often packed with pioneering technology so it doesn't want its competitors to get wind of them before they de debut. Uh, that would include, of course, in the States, that would include uh, companies like Universal, who is also uh, doing some animatronic work as well. They're, they're taking a different tack with it than Disney is. We're, we're moving ahead to this part here so we can, we can get onto it a little bit more. However, at the start of this month, Disney's public relations team tore up that script when it released a full point of view ride through of one of its most eagerly awaited attractions, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. There it is, by the way. I don't know if you've compared it to Splash Mountain, but go look up Splash Mountain and tell me which one is more, uh, for lack of a better word, iconic here. Uh, reaction has not been favorable to this so far. Uh, Vash, how would you describe the reaction? Oh, yeah. I mean, so you, you, you basically have two camps. And one camp is attempting to uh, maybe apologize for this attraction or say that it's you know it's it's way better than everybody else thinks because the other camp and by an overwhelming majority that camp is uh is saying that this is this right is basically mediocre and below <laughs> that's basically how it uh, divides there I'd say that's a, a fair statement. And right here from uh, from Caroline Reed, at the time of this writing, the ride through video has 336,000 views, but has only been liked 7,600 times. Worse still, it has been deluged with negative feedback. We're going to talk about more of that, by the way. This video is, and this is a quote, this video is so boring, I can't even imagine why they thought it would be a good idea. And the animatronics with the awkward arm motions, this re-theme is going to go down as one of the greatest theme park blunders, wrote one reviewer. Another said, Disney once made a Haunted Mansion ride with 999 souls. They've now created an entire mountain without one. Ouch. There's a lot of this going on uh, right now. The The fan reaction is, is fierce. The comments, I can't believe 
the number of neg usually there are people who come out and defend Disney and go soft on this stuff that like especially if it's a kid's attraction there'll there'll be a somebody who holds up their hand and says by the way this is for 4 year olds that might not be the case for uh, Splash Mountain and Tiana's Bayou Adventure Vash why is Disney stumbling a little bit with whether or not this is a kid's ride well because the entire attraction was designed i think originally for kind of teens and, and young adults. Uh, that was the demographic they were most interested in when actually building uh, Splash Mountain originally. It was it was Brett Eisner who approved this attraction uh, at WDI when Michael Eisner brought his son to the workshop and said, hey, let's let's see about attractions that we can approve that you would be interested in because that was a target demographic at the, at the time. And so it, when Brett Eisner saw that model, it was like, this is what we got to build right there. So it was all kind of designed with the idea that hey look listen we're gonna put in this you know thrill element in the form of this uh in the form of the splash right here it's gonna be the the largest steepest tallest in the world it's a 52 foot drop and it and right. and and there were articles talking about we know that the height requirement now for tiana's bayou adventure yeah we've we've known it for a very long time they, they weren't actually changing the ride system here uh, apparently they're changing some sensors and and something about switchback there are some technical aspects of this ride that might have changed but for the most part this is the exact same ride system that they have had in here at this location since 1989. now I don't want to say that the feedback has been all negative because it hasn't all been negative. Uh, it just seems like the higher up on the food chain you are, the more likely it is that you're going to be positive about this experience. Let's let's look at Polygon for just a second. This article uh, from Chris Planty says, Tiana's Bayou Adventure looks better than Splash Mountain. See for yourself. Tiana's Bayou Adventure has finally replaced Splash, Splash Mountain at Disney World. The Disney Parks YouTube account is celebrating the completion of this unprecedented transformation with a nearly 10-minute 4K ride-through. Our first impression... Holy moly, they actually pulled this off. Hmm. The ride's designers had to walk a tightrope while reimagining one of the biggest rides in terms of scale and popularity. That's uh, that's very true right there. By, by most metrics and most surveys, uh, Splash Mountain was the most popular theme park attraction in the world uh, at Disney's theme parks. They, they would need to maintain or improve upon Splash Mountain's abundance of animatronics. Hey Vash, how many animatronics were in Splash Mountain? Ooh, well, it depends on which version you're, you're looking at. So at Disneyland, over 103, I believe 68 at Walt Disney World. That's a, that's a lot of animatronics. Uh, I would say <laughs> Splash Mountain's abundance of animatronic characters representing the classic approach to Disney's most iconic rides. But they'd also have to incorporate modern technology, ultra high resolution screens, custom 3D animations. Um, they, they bought some screens and they did some 3D animation. That's OK <laughs> for Bayou Adventure to fit alongside the park's other new e-ticket attractions like Star Wars, Rise of the Resistance and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I do see a common thread here between Tiana's Bayou Adventure and Rise of the Resistance and Runaway Railway. Vash, can you guess what that common thread is? Well, let's see here. Well, uh, Charita Carter worked on a few of them, but I was going to say continuous have... downtime. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Run Runaway Railway is 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 developing a reputation for a, a ride that continuously has uh, broken elements. Here, uh, they just now got back the uh, hot air balloon that was on the Disneyland version. That was it's been gone for something like. 18 months or something like that. These are rides that continuously have have uh, technical issues that bring down the ride or give guests a uh, lesser experience. In a decision that will please the most nostalgic among us, the design team favored the old school approach, stuffing the ride with an astonishing number of animatronic characters. They use screens to supplement the experience like the powdered sugar on a delicious beignet. I'm not sure that this person has been to Disney very often or, or been on many recently vash okay a hundred animatronics on the disneyland mm -hmm. version. many of them supplied from the america scene sings attraction that was uh shut down correct uh, how many big animatronics are we talking on the on the high level here how many animatronics are we talking about yeah high level if we include if we include a lot of stuff and and Jonas, i believe you cataloged this uh, quite nicely because i think you include like the lower half of louis and stuff like that uh, About louis butt, 15. yes I, I i counted louis butt as an animatronic because he's a character and if you take out if you take out louis butt and you also take out the four uh characters that are just kind of standing there in that final scene like ralphie 
It just happens to be there. There's no introduction of Ralphie. There's just, hey, why is there a kid here all of a sudden? Is that Tiana and not Naveen's kid? Maybe, I don't I don't know. It's supposed to be uh, Naveen's little brother, but they don't explain that in the ride. If you take those out, there's only 10, which is, is not enough. Uh, by the way, we'll talk about this more later. Those animatronics are already busted. Um, there's multiple POVs that have now been uploaded, and, and it looks like um, Lewis is already not functioning the way that he's supposed to. But that's not what this video is about. We want to talk about this full ride POV. This is from, as you can see, the Disney Parks YouTube channel. And right here, um, 9.1K, and, and right here, this 23,000 dislikes to 9.1 thousand likes this is this is not going in the right direction uh right there just need to fill that in real quick since uh that is my legitimate opinion there vash why do you think people dislike this ride so much oh well if you if you if you read those comments it, it becomes very very clear i think look there are a range of issues that people have with this ride but i think the most common one the most common thread is that the story is not good it's muddled it's mediocre there's no drama there's no there's no adventure, even though adventure is listed on the sign right there. It's it's I guess people people consider passive and active attractions. I think uh, one of our commenters actually said it was an inactive attraction. I think that's the biggest flaw here. All of these animatronics and, and, and everything that they could have done, if they if they compacted it into a smaller space and didn't have it surrounding Splash Mountain and it wasn't, say, an 11 minute attract, 11, 11, almost 12 minutes, actually, this entire attraction is. If this was just a dark ride that that had these elements in it, I don't think it would be as bad. But the fact that you're floating down the bayou in a log and, and it takes so long to get between the show scenes, we're seeing a lot of people talking about how, oh, no, no, you actually feel like you're in the bayou. I don't think that, I don't think they've been in the bayou, for one. M maybe I'm just being too harsh on the ride. But, but, but as we said, the comments are interesting. Let's go to this one from Mickey Views by Braden. Tiana's Bayou Adventure inundated with criticism from fans. Hey, there's that comment right there. Uh, about the souls and the lack of one. Uh, let's just read a few of these. Uh, I'm sorry, but there is no coherent story, no suspense or sense of danger, no sense of danger or thrill. I wish they had added Dr. Facilier. By the way, spoilers for the ride, Dr. Facilier, the villain of Princess and the Frog, does not make an appearance, especially for the big drop. It would have been so much better. Tiana deserves so much better than this snooze fest. There, there's the animal. Regarding the story, let's get you to the party. It reminded of Disney's worst ride in history, Superstar Limo. Let's get oh. you to the premiere. Oh, oh, there's a callback right there. That was a that was a, a Michael Eisner era ride that got derailed by modern day news of the time. We don't right. need to get into the history of that. But that was a ride that was super slowed down. And uh, <laughs> I, I wrote it. I can just I can just tell you right now, Jonas, you, you, you never want to look at a very bad puppet of Joan Rivers uh, if you don't have to. <laughs> I, I, I still I, I still chuckle at the fact that that Drew Carey animatronic is there just in a different costume. Oh, here we go. Uh, riding the original splash as a kid. I'll never forget the fear and tension building up to the drop, the creepy music, the vultures mocking you and then pure joy and celebration after surviving the briar patch. Well, Zippity Doodah plays in the background. By the way, Zippity Doodah. Yep, that's been removed from the ride. I'm not sure why they removed it from the ride because it's an excellent song. Special Spice, as a nice person, I'm it's fine. It's it's not a great song. It's it's kind of it, it's dynamically very stable, and it seems like it would be a, a better one to just kind of play in the background in a scene, not make it the finale of your ride. Uh, Tiana has no drama. Stories need danger and high stakes for the payoff to be satisfying. Dr. Facilier, another call for Dr. Facilier. Vash, I'm seeing a common thread here. Yes, that people want uh, the, the the lead villain in this film, which was so uh, well received and, and has been a, a, a stalwart at, at previous uh, Disney events and so forth. People really do like Dr. Facilier. They were expecting to see him. People wanted to see, are you ready as they came, came up the lip hill? And uh, we might have uh, more about that story in the upcoming video. Y yes, yes, we will. We've got one planned that I think everyone will be better informed when we explain what happened with Dr. Facilier. Here's, mm. a, here's a good one, and I think this is a, an excellent little subset here. This ride showcases all of the issues of modern Imagineering. Expensive animatronics takes the place of well-populated scenes, lots of dead space with nothing to look at, overly sanitized story with no conflict, drama, or tension. 
I, I'd say that's a pretty fair point. Uh, and, and it's very indicative of a lot of modern attractions now from WDI. There seems to be no uh, no gumption for for fear or for uh, thrill or for a lot of the emotions that have uh, have really made uh, so many amazing attractions from WDI in the past what they are. You're absolutely correct. These are the last two comments I'm going to read here. I'm confused. Isn't she supposed to be a princess? Why is she dressed like a 19th century big game hunter? There's five or six Tiana animatronics on this ride. I'm going to say five and uh, not a lot of motion. And there's only one costume change. So she's in that that outfit for most of the ride. And even in the final scene, she's not in her princess dress. So uh, Disney's not even playing to their core audience here with that last dress. It's 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 not the princess dress. Uh, And finally, Rest in rest in peace, Splash Mountain. You died for nothing. Mm. What a tragedy! All right, Vash. Oh man, I wish I could go ride Splash Mountain. It, this makes me want to go uh, and pay that airfare to go over to Japan so that you can see Splash Mountain. By the way, I hear their their version of Splash Mountain was actually properly maintained as well because it's a point of pride over there. I think I'm far enough removed that I can uh, make this comment that there was a certain Imagineer who. Um, went over to Tokyo and and was on this ride and there was somebody who had never never been on that that ride and was so shocked at the number of actual animatronics he had assumed that there were sculptures in the american versions that he had seen because he had never seen those animatronics fully functional Japan is so much better at theme parks than the American side is right now. There's probably a, a week's worth of videos talking about the differences here and there. And I, and I think some of the websites um, would probably agree with that. Vash, do you think the sentiment is going to change for Tiana's Bayou Adventure anytime soon? No, no. I, as more people are exposed to this, and, and this is something that I noted when I, when I was keeping up with this attraction on its way to debut here, I, I noted that the more people are exposed to this attraction, the more people um, understand what is going in and, 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 and what they can expect from this attraction, the more they were not excited for it. I think people were really excited for a Princess and the Frog attraction. I don't think people were excited for Tiana's Bite Adventure, and that's key. I, I think you're correct. And also they they oversold it a little bit. A lot of that concept art that they released, that blue sky concept where Disney says, this is what we're thinking about. And then they release something that is definitely not as good as the concept art. That's a, that's a recurring theme here for the Walt Disney Company. But that being said, we want to throw this to our commenters. What do you think about what's going on with Tiana's Bayou Adventure? We are getting some pushback. I mean, it, it's a relatively minor level of pushback for how hard we are supposedly being on this attraction. We would like Disney to do better. If they if they built an attraction that was of the same quality and storytelling history as as uh, Splash Mountain, I don't think we would be having this problem. Rise of the Resistance would be an excellent uh, example of a ride where maybe the movies itself were not as popular, but the ride when it works is uh, is one that people would say, I don't know, transcends the IP or maybe they just enjoy the ride. Uh, here with Sianna's Bayou Adventure, I like Princess and the Frog, and I'm not a fan of this ride, Uh, but that's just my personal take. We'd love to hear yours in the comment section down below. Like this video if you like this video, and consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.